in ceremony. In the unlikely event of an emergency, we will evacuate the marquee and follow the guys to the evacuation points on the first AstroTurf. May I ask you now to please take this opportunity to ensure that all mobile phones are switched off. Please stand for the platform party. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please sit down? Mm -hmm. It's a little cooler this morning than it was yesterday afternoon, but nonetheless, I'd like to invite anyone who's wearing a jacket to please take it off if you wish. And I'll give you a few moments to do that. If you're a prize winner, if you can remember to slip your jacket on again before you come up, because photographs, I suspect, will be being taken. So I'll just let you settle in with that for a start. I've never been welcomed before with a fanfare. Um, and that was fantastic. And they've already disappeared, but they've gone, they've gone back to work. So thank you very much for those students who welcomed us, and they were Miles King, George Ross, James Kemp, Rebecca Abbott, Cameron Abbott, Patrick Gallagher, Rihanna Alley, and James Howell. So that was fantastic, and thanks very much to them. Someone will pass that thanks on. Yes, I think so. Let's give them a <laughs> I can see someone at the back there who will pass that on. Thank you very much indeed. So welcome to the 2018 Prep School Prize Giving. And I think it's a great pleasure to see you all here today. And this is a real celebration of the fantastic work that's going on in the prep school. And therefore, without any further ado, I'd like to invite Sue Knox to give her address. And once she's given her address, then I'll just uh, quickly introduce the platform party and then we'll get on with proceedings. <coughs> Well, good morning, everybody, and a very, very warm welcome to our governors, our guest speaker, Ethan Waller, our special guests, parents, staff, and more importantly, all of you Wellingborough pupils around me here today. Today is a little bit of a bittersweet day, for as you know, this is my last end of year address as my family, family and I depart in December. Before I begin, I want to say with great feeling and sincerity, thank you for your kindness in embracing me as your headmistress, your kindness will travel with all of us. Indeed, the transformative power of kindness has been in all of our thoughts throughout the year because you may know that our theme for the year has been one of kindness. It was Mrs. Owen, sitting here behind me, who came to our first staff meeting in August last year, buzzing with excitement about the idea. We didn't have to think long about it before deciding that yes, that was absolutely the right one for our school. Not only an academically superb school and an exciting school, but a kind school because that is what will set us apart. I believe acts of kindness, big or small, are never trivial. In fact, in September, I received this note from a year four pupil. And it says, Mrs. Knox, you are kind and helpful and kind a little bit more. And that really, really made my day. Uh, a, a year six boy also wrote to me telling me the 16 things he liked about the school with point 12 being I like all the children in the school because they are really nice to me and supportive we learn habits of mind that help us be kind and helpful with no put downs kindness is the antidote to what's happening to our children right now the ones being called the snowflake generation who with just a puff of wind fly off course 
a little heat of opposition or challenge and they just melt. Our children are losing their sense of potency and positioning. We are overprotective, hovering over our children so they can neither fail nor be challenged by their failure to try and try again. Yet I firmly believe that we as parents and teachers have a unique gift that we alone can give our children. And without this gift, our children will flounder throughout life and be constantly seeking reassurance from others. Instead, we need to nurture them so they can summon reassurance from within. So what is this antidote to this powerlessness, this unique gift that we can give our child children? It's kindness to themselves, to others, and its power knows no bounds. I was thinking about its power to transform when a parent wrote to me, and she wrote, Wellingborough School has made my son feel secure, valued, hopeful, capable. School spirit has established in him foundations for good friendship, strong character, lifelong learning, and physical prowess. Wellingborough School, with its understated excellence in the nurture and extension of the next generation, has won my son's heart. As a parent, I will forever be grateful. To make kindness a permanent part of our school, we now have a kindness box where pupils and staff nominate each other for acts of kindness. And I asked Mrs. Owen to share with me her favourite nomination, and this was it from a pupil, who wrote, I nominate all of the teachers for teaching us, for always being the greatest, and for never moaning. <laughs> we found out how to say kindness in ten different languages at our International Languages Day. We swapped Advent for a kindness calendar to inspire us to do one act of kindness every day in December. We gave out these smiley faces made by our art club. From a box of smiles to people who needed a bit of cheering up and you can now find them dotted around all over the school, even in pre-prep and in the senior school. There was kindness too when I and year sevens will remember this, attempted 10 pin bowling. There I was, thank you year seven. I was in September, it was a long time ago. The memory is still there. Uh, there I was at the year 17 building event when I took the bowl, aimed, got my fingers stuck in the bowl and launched myself head first like a cartoon character down the lane with more speed than agility. There was a collective gasp and giggles and then chivalry as my husband, Tim... Superglue is a lot of fun. Superglue is a lot of fun, thank you, Tim. He came rushing to pick me up. Laughing with the others, I commented, at least there were no mobile phones to capture my dreadful fall, to which one helpful Year 7 girl commented, there's always CCTV footage, Mrs Knox. <laughs> of course, kindness is more than mere gestures. To me, the transformative power of kindness should affect how we learn, how we learn, when we learn, and how we translate our learning into action. Our volunteering and community service is an example. Here, our children have knitted trauma teddies for Red Cross, made pom-poms for the children's ward, worked with Rowan Gate School, helped at the Daylight Centre food bank, planted crocuses for Rotary against polio, and picked rubbish every Friday afternoon in Wellingborough, discovering from themselves that each act of kindness can change community around them. Our year seven pupils showed fabulous kindness as role models for their pre-prep buddies. And likewise, our anti-bullying ambassadors have developed as leaders attending a training day and then using ideas from this experience to run a very positive anti-bullying week. The highlight was the photo booth where pupils held up speech bubbles and had their photos taken to show that we as a school want to make bullying totally unacceptable. As teachers, we've practiced kindness, actively building our focus on individualized learning to ensure that every single child felt known, supported, and challenged in their learning. I've seen our pupils apply their growing skills and kindness to all they do, including in music and sport. So often I hear positive comments about how polite and courteous our sporting teams are to one another and to visiting teams. And two boys were overheard talking recently, and one said to the other, do you want me to captain to win or captain to involve everyone? To which the other boy replied, why don't you aim to do both? 
Our under 13 hockey girls at Gresham's Festival were extraordinary in their kindness and support to one another, as were our rugby sevens qualifying for the Northampton Saints tournament. Our athletes were equally supportive as we brought home a whole suite of personal bests, school records and county awards. These are just a few examples of many. In music, our community spirit is also exemplified and the joint Christmas concert was an absolute highlight where we heard every single player of string, wind and brass combined to celebrate Christmas. Even our staff dug out their dusty instruments to join in. And the spring concert was superb with nearly 70 musicians bringing the house down. Mr. Lightfelt, where, where are you, Mr. Lightfelt? I think you still have some CDs of the spring concert, and you, you've got some, and you will personally sign them. Yes. <laughs> Today, I am delighted to announce a new award. Now, the pupils don't know about this. It's called the Kindness Award. Every pupil in the prep school two weeks ago voted for the person that they recognised as the person who demonstrated kindness, generosity, and consideration to others. And we have a junior and a senior pupil. Now these two pupils don't know this, but I'm going to announce their names now and invite them to join me on the stage. So I am delighted that the recipient for the Kindness Award for our junior pupil is Sahib Sidhu, voted by all of the pupils. Come forward. <laughs> for her kindness and consideration to others is Megan Griggs. Megan, please give me a hand. for their acts of kindness and we have added all these nominations up and the teacher with the most nominations over the year for her kindness and consideration to other staff members and the recipient of this year's Teachers Kindness Award and I'd like this teacher to come forward is Mrs Anna Stevens. year at Wellingborough. I'll remember Sydney the cat and how she continued to be the unofficial school mascot including becoming part of Mrs. Stoughton's year seven lesson studying sound. Sydney calmly wandered into a lesson. Mrs. Stoughton turned up the oscilloscope well beyond our human limit to which her ears began to twitch as she looked around to see what the noise was. She has continued to be an active and somewhat distracting visitor to classes. I have loved watching shy pupils find courage and with the kind encouragement of others speak publicly, give persuasive speeches, recite poetry and Shakespeare. They have built strong foundations for life. I love the emphasis the school has on performing arts and music and how the very act of performing enables our children to build a positive view of themselves. I have loved the fantastic array of extracurricular music sporting opportunities the children participate. And I also love the ferret race, of course, that the Parent Association put on, where I held a ferret for the very first and Stradfern very last time. The smell was quite unbelievable. Um, but we are going to be running the event again this year. But truthfully, someone uh, most recently from Barmy, Australia, my most memorable day was when we closed the school because of snow. Headmaster. Do you remember that day when we met outside the chapel at 5.45 a.m. and due to the extreme weather conditions decided to close the school? At least one pupil was also inspired, at least by the snow, if not by the homework I emailed home. He wrote a poem to me which said, not sure if you know, but we had some snow. Mrs. Knox won't let us get bored. Her email still works, oh Lord. <laughs> What a fabulous year we've had. I would like to sincerely thank the teachers for being equal partners in our journey this year. Your willingness to be stretched and your passion for teaching inspire me. Your kindness knows no limits. I asked my daughter Poppy, who finishes school this year, 
what makes Wellingborough School so special? And she said, without hesitation, the teachers. I absolutely agree with this sentiment, and this recent email from a parent brought it home to me. We are confident in the fact that our daughter is now in a school that presents the best educational opportunities for her with positive and caring teachers. They are the ones who are making the difference, and we look forward to seeing her grow into the person she wants to be. I'd like to acknowledge a few teachers who are leaving the school at the end of the year. Mrs. Julie Mason, who has not only been an invaluable member of our design and technology department with her creativity and passion for the subject, but who has also brought authenticity to our year fours of the Viking world. Mr. Howard Barnhurst, an inspiring teacher who we say goodbye to for a second time. The first time when he was a pupil here and he left, and now as a teacher, leaving to pursue his further studies at Edinburgh. Mr. Ed Buck, who has proven to be completely invaluable to both the sport and geography departments, who now moves closer to home, taking up a teaching position at Giggleswick. And Reverend Walker, who has been at the school for 18 years as chaplain and head of RS, and who moves to lead a benefice in Somerset. And finally to Mr. Chris Pickett, who has been a superb acting deputy head pastoral for the year. He is not leaving us, but returning to his previous role as head of Panthers and head of history. Please join me in congratulating all of these teachers and all of our participants. <laughs> and it's up to us to ensure that each one of them is loved, reassured, treated with kindness so their fledgling self-confidence can grow. And so as I conclude, I'd like to leave you with a poem by Diane Lomas, a benediction of sorts, as I plan my next steps and you continue the most important work of nurturing your children. If I had my child to raise all over again, I'd finger paint more and point the finger less. I'd do less correcting and more connecting I'd take my eyes off my watch and I'd watch with my eyes. I'd take more hikes and ride more bikes. I'd stop playing serious and seriously play. I'd run through the fields and gaze at more stars. I'd build self-esteem first and the house later. I'd teach less about the love of power and teach more about the power of love. Thank you. Mrs Knox, thank you very much indeed for that excellent speech and we also wish you well in your future. Um, in a few moments we will commence the presentation of the prizes for years four to eight. This therefore would be the moment to be slipping your jacket on if you are certain or suspect you might be winning a prize. And while you're doing that, this will give me an opportunity to introduce just some of the people on the platform today. Uh, you will know Mrs. Petrie and Mrs. Owen on my far right, on your left. I'm going to introduce now, just very briefly, our guest speaker, who is Ethan Waller, who was in, who is an OW, who was in Parker Staines, but more important, he was in Wolves. I'm hoping for a ripple of cheer there from Wolves. Let's hear it. Thank you very much. Mrs. Knox, you cannot fail to know. Um, on my immediate left is the headmaster. Mr. Holman, and to, to his left, Miss Jocelyn Everett. Miss Jocelyn, we always call you Miss Jocelyn, and it, it always amuses me, and I love it, and I prefer that, actually. And then, immediately to her left, are the head boy and head girl, Matthew Sherwood and Maddie Nakash, and finally, and not leaving, just to say that one more time, <laughs> Mr. Pickett. That is your platform party, and we welcome them with this round of applause. So with no more ado, I would like to invite Ethan Waller to hand out the prizes and shake hands with the pupils, and Mrs. Simmons and Mrs. Owen to control the activity. Thank you very much. <laughs> four prizes. For AK English, Lily Colmer, 
four AKS Mathematics, Arian Patel, four AKS Science, Abhinav Pinelli. English, Amelia Panchal, 4AS Mathematics, Sachin Panchal, 4AS Science, Elliot Wills. <laughs> English, Hayley Corton, 4CM Mathematics, Phoebe Bond, 4CM Science, Scarlet Bond. Anna Pearson, Year 4 Design and Technology, Amanda Ahedaha, Year 4 Drama, Alfie Nelson Conway. French, Amelia Cranciris, Year 4 Geography, Andrew Wright, Year 4 History, William Walker. Year 4 ICT, Emily Borner. Year 4 Music, Isabella Lee. Year 4 Religious Studies, Lauren Reeves. JP English, Zara Stanion, 5FD English, Alfie Redfern, 5SA English, Thomas Basford. Mathematics and 5JP Science, Anish Jadeja, 5BM Mathematics, Toby Shaw, 5WR Mathematics, Joshua Malone. and Year 5 Design and Technology, Suleiman Ali, 5JF Science, Nicholas Stringfellow. <laughs> year 
5 Art and History, Thomas Docker. Year 5 Drama and Music, Angus MacDougall. Year 5 French, Amélie Royale. Geography, Thomas Campbell. Year 5 ICT, Charlie Mustard. Year 5 Religious Studies, Lucy Morris. Year 6 Prizes 6 HB English and Year 6 History, Nicole Smerin 6 FD English and the Junior English Reading Prize, Henry Walker 6 SA English, Izzy Yashin JRB Mathematics and 6 HM Science, Vinay Ram. 6 BR Mathematics and Year 6 Religious Studies, Isabel Ogborn. 6 WR Mathematics, Logan Burns. HC Science, Jack Bates, 6 RR Science, Fabian Sims. <laughs> Year 6 Art, Douglas Kidd. Year 6 Geography and Design and Technology, Emily Watts. Year 6 French and the Junior Huckle Handwriting Prize, Zara Reeves. Year 6 ICT, Thomas Denton. Year 6 Music, Kieran Thakra. The Junior Reading Progress Prize, Joseph Cook. Year 7 prizes, 7 SA English, 7 AJS Science and Year 7 Geography, Florence McDougall, 7 FD English, 7 LA2 Latin, Year 7 Design and Technology and the Senior English Reading Prize, Emma Harris. JP English, Adi Agueka, 7 HB English, Polly Lamberton, 7 BR Mathematics, 7 LW Geography and French, Thomas Hilton. Seven 
7BM Mathematics, Jessica Jew. 7WR Mathematics, Nathan Bianchi. 7JRB Mathematics, Annabelle Burgess.